everybody, this is Dave, and welcome to part two of the Azustor AS304T. This is a four bay NAS in which you could take your four hard drives. There's a compatibility list that you can go by to see what uh, hard drives you can use with the NAS. And I had a couple of days to play with this, and I think uh, there's a lot of potential. This is a Intel Atom processor. It's got one gigabyte of DDR3 RAM. It's got two USB 3.0s and two USB 2.0s, as well as an HDMI out, so you can hook it up to your big screen TV. So let's get started. I want to show you how to set this up. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go into your product list and pick your product. Then you can go into services and click download and pick your unit from the list, the drop down list. And you'll see that you have the ADM. There's already ADM installed on it. So what you need to do is if you're running Windows or Mac, you want to download the control center. I'm going to download the control center and I'm also going to download the download assistant and there's also documentation so that you can do your quick install but if you follow this video I'll show you everything so there's a bunch of app downloads that you can download for your Android or your iOS or Windows devices and this is so that you when you go mobile with their cloud you can access your NAS from anywhere there's dedicated Android apps that you can get. So go ahead and install all of your apps that you think you might want. Even if you're not going to use them, you can quickly install them onto your iOS or Android device. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to launch the software control center. And that's what's going to see our NAS over the network and we'll be able to configure it the way we want to configure it. So let's go ahead into our downloads and we see that we have both of them there. So we can install Control Center. So now that's that's installed we can also look, download and install the download assistant that's going to help with when you download things from your computer it will download to your NAS in the downloads folder but we'll go over the ADM 2.1 software in a second quick and easy to install these so let's go into applications folder and you'll see control center and we're going to click control center and we get this that searches our NAS over the network. Now this NAS, all I did was put the hard drives in and hit the power button. So we click on this and we hit OK. So now it's going to take us to the web page. There's two ways to start up your NAS is you do the one click setup in case you don't know all about RAID and all that other stuff. But we'll go through custom setup. It's basically the same thing except you get to select a couple things. So we're going to leave the name the same. I'm going to put a new password in. I'll make it simple four digits and I'll confirm it and hit the arrow. We're going to set up our time zone. I'm going to keep the date format, the 12 hour clock, and I'm going to use, I'm going to syn synchronize to the web. You hit the next button and I'm going to obtain an IP address automatically. Anytime you install a product that is Wi-Fi, the router can install an IP address dedicated to that uh, particular unit. Or you could set it up manually if you wanted to, but I recommend doing it automatically. Now here are the four hard drives that I have. They're 2.73. They're really, that's what the real sizes are. So we'll click on all of those. 
and we'll confirm that we're going to erase. Now, the RAID level, you can either do it single and get all 12 terabytes, or just a bunch of disks, or you could do RAID 0. That's pretty much all the same. But when we get down to redundancy, and you want to back up and have a way to uh, restore in case one of the drives fail, I recommend doing RAID 5, 6, or 10. So we're all set up with this. We're going to hit our next button, and it's going to tell you pretty much all the things that it's doing. So it's going to do the hard drive. It's going to do system volume, data volume, and then set your password and your language, time zone, server name, and the IP4 v4 networking so we'll let that do its thing now while we're waiting there's a great community forum where you can get all answers to your questions you can download different software and user guides then we have compatibility that just uh, to figure out what works with your NAS then you have the Astor College which will give you step-by-step -step instructions how to do things. Also, we have support. So if, if this is your first time setting up ID, you're going to set up, if you already have done this in the past and this is just a restore like I'm doing here, you put in your email and your password, or you could just register later. Let me show you what it looks like. So basically, you just put all your information in, and then you'll be all set. So let me go back. I'll put in my credentials. And then we get started. So it's going to give you some quick info. So here are the default apps that we get. There's one page. You can rename, rename that page. We'll call it Home. And then as you install apps, the page dots get longer so that you could switch from page to page using arrows along the side. Up top here, we have our taskbar. Anytime you have an app open, it will show you that app minimized in this area. You also have admin where you can go into settings. You can put the unit to sleep, shut it down, and sign out. There's also a search, a search light, sort of like spotlight. And let's go through some of these apps. So first things first, we'll go into settings and you'll see general settings network for your Wi-Fi in your home as well as any USB dongles or Wi-Fi dongles VPN settings regional options hardware notifications where you can actually add an email address you have the ADM Defender where you can block certain users and things like that. You can update your ADM. You have a network recycle bin so that if you delete any like photos, they will go into a recycle bin first. And then you'll have to delete them out of the recycle bin. Energy saver. This is where we're going to set up Cloud Connect and easy router configuration as well as DDNS. Factory default and registration to registration your product. We'll get back to settings in a second. So now we'll go into access control and you can set up all your users and shared folders in this. Now, by default, your file browser or file explorer has home, public, and web. They want you to install Java to make things 
a little bit better moving around in these menus. But unfortunately, Chrome is not a 64-bit browser, so you won't be able to install Java on Chrome. If you use Safari or Firefox, you'll be able to do that. You could still use your NAS without installing Java, but Java just gives you a better experience. If you have any external hard drives or virtual disks, here's your recycle bin and your share link manager so that you can turn off or turn on links that you've shared to others. As we install apps, you'll see some more folders being built. You can manually install folders or create folders yourself. So we can also back up and restore to other disks or cloud or FTP backups as well as restore. So it goes both ways. If you have any external drives, they will be showing up here, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, dongles, things like that. We have Storage Manager, which will tell us the health of our drives and disks. System Info about your network, log, online users, and Dr. Azustor, which is great that Azustor has created something like this. Basically, you can check the health of your NAS and its drives. Services, you can enable for Windows file system and for Mac AFP as well as Bonjour services in your local Wi-Fi and you can enable time machine support enable NFS services FTP WebDAV web server for building web pages terminal and we'll get more into this as we go along what else online help if you wanted to get some more information and pretty much that is the basic setup it's a very simple interface I enjoy it because there's not more than you need we'll be going over App Central in a little bit that'll probably be our next video so I could show you all what's inside App Center and that's basically going to help you to get all the things you need to get done so I hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions leave them in the comments make sure you go and visit azustore.com check out all the great NAS units that they have if you have any questions just let me know and I'll get back to you very quickly. Hope you have a nice day, and I'll see you on the next video.